everybody. It's Becca from Brother Firetrack. Good, I'm great. I mean, the sun is shining. Oh, it's not. <laughs> but, you know, I'm all fuzzy and warm inside. Every time you put out something new, it's, it's always exciting. And, uh, you know, we've had the policy of uh, not putting out anything that we're not, have, you know, 100% happy about. So it's, uh, it's all uh, exciting. And, uh, but, you know, how the world is right now, it's just uh, unfortunate that we're not able to, to head out and, and, and play the damn thing. Can you do? Oh, you said you think it's it's more yeah, uplifting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's just so you know that's that's too funny because you know I've had people come up to me and you know after listening to the, to the album and they're like, okay, this this one is a bit more in you know in the melancholy side of things of Brother Price. Right? Mm -hmm. And now you're saying now you're saying it's more, even more a pleasure. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where agree to, with that. Just, you know, I, it's it's all in the uh, eye of the beholder yeah. over here. You know, I can't. I'm too close to the songs, and yeah. we never really think about it too much. Which is, you know, what comes out comes out, and and we don't really analyze it too much. Yeah. You know? But in my mind, it's just overall. Feel the Burn album is uh, is just you know rather fire truck with uh, the different twist because of uh, having a new guitarist and uh, having a producer or somebody outside the band for the first time. So it's uh, you know it's just fresh. You know. But you said it's it's even more uplifting than than before. I love that. <laughs> He, well, he always well. comes around and steals our beer. You know, nothing's <laughs> changed in that right. sense. He plays on two, two tracks. Okay. Yeah. The first two songs we did was before we had the meeting on and decided to go our separate ways in terms of him, you know, stepping down from the band as a guitarist. But, you know, it was just a, a fair thing to do for everybody involved. I mean, you know, if uh, we'd gone the... the the same old group of, you know, just waiting for Nightwish having a parade or something like that. You know, it looked like uh, Brother Fights right wouldn't have done anything for at least four or five years. So, or at another, and it would have meant that Ample would have been straight out on the road for God knows how many years, and it's just not fair. You know? Yeah. So no bad blood at all. We just did what grown up guys do, make decisions and move on. He brings his own persona, he brings his own style, his his guitar sound, which is uh, obviously uh, a shot in the arm for the band. You know, as much as we we love the way Ample plays and he's got his own signature thing going on. Uh, Ample has the same thing, uh, I mean, Robert has the same thing, you know, in terms of uh, how he is as a guitarist. And uh, it obviously changes a lot of things for a band when you change a key element, such as a guitarist. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, he, he fits in perfectly, even though he's uh, 120 years younger than the rest of us. But, you know, <laughs> it's just. Uh, He's got the same uh, kind of mindset what comes to bad humor and, and how to hang. And plus he's a monster of a player. He was. Well, I, I, I played with him on a numerous occasion because uh, he's also playing to make a living. So, you know, the Finnish uh, freelancer circuit, you know, you're playing your uh, cruise ships and you're doing the, the company gigs and you're doing the bar gigs. You know, I, I played with them before and, and I knew what he's capable of. And uh, he was the first guy I called, even without telling the other guys. I just called him up and, and that phone call took about 
30 seconds. And he was in. He said yes, even before I asked the question. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> and uh, then it was just all about, you know, me informing the other guys that, oh, by the way, we have a new guitarist. Oh, there's, a, there's a great story behind it. And, you know, we, uh, we started working on the album, and, and at some point I had a, you know, it's, it's not the easiest thing to, to come up with a, with a great title. And uh, if you start thinking about it too much, it just, you know, it doesn't get you anywhere. And I had a working title for the album, which is not too good. It was so bad that I can't even remember it right now. <laughs> right now but, uh, you know, before the whole uh, Corona thing kicked off, uh, me and the guys, uh, we decided to have a little vacation because we were at the point of uh, making the album where we were able to kind of push it into our producer's hands, like, okay, start working on it, we're going to take off for a couple of weeks. And uh, we went to, uh, to the west coast of America, and, uh, and uh, this one night we were just roaming around back and forth the uh, Hollywood Boulevard, and we saw this old guy, he looked a bit like Bernie Sanders, you know? The, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and he was selling these Hollywood tours, you know. Just hop on this and we'll take you out and show you the, the homes of the stars. And that stuff. And we walked past him and he kind of grabbed our sleeve. Like he shut. And uh, he was like, where are you guys from? And, and the second one said, Finland. He starts hollering like, ah, oh, get this. And just tears and finish. Get this, feel the burn. Feel the burn, keep this. <laughs> I'm like, hey, cool. And, and every time we kind of walked past him, he, even if we were you know, on the other side of the street, he always spotted us and started yelling, feel the burn, <laughs> feel the burn, keep this. And he kind of stuck, you know, that became the theme for the rest of the trip for us. You yeah. know, every time somebody had a drink, or a couple of times that somebody had a drink, but you know, every time uh, somebody had a drink, somebody shouted, feel the burn. And, and we got back home. And uh, then it came time to uh, think about the title of the album again. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, feel the burn. That's it. There's a story behind it. And it's just, you know, feel the burn could be anything. I mean, if you, uh, for instance, you get that feeling when you come to a big city for the first time and you see all the lights and everything, and you're like this, and like, like something's about to happen. So that's, yeah. that's the idea of it. That was uh, actually we did that for uh, this festival organizer who uh, wanted to have a theme song and just wanted us to write it and uh, in the vein of you know classic, classic uh, traditional brother fire truck kind of vibe and uh, lo and behold I, I we came up with a song called Park in the City <laughs> which is also the name of the oh, festival really? I presume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that kind of, you know, visual image of the classic Americana kind of thing, it's always appealing and it's always cool. And we just, for some reason, you know, we wanted to try how that kind of image works for, for the new stuff that we had. And it worked. The basic thing that we write and sing about is the, is the constant classic battle between a man and a woman, obviously, you know. That stuff just never ends, you know. So, uh, and it fits this kind of music, you know. I've never, uh, uh, you know, had any, any desire to be political or, or anything like that. I mean, it's, you know, it's important that some people do that, but, you know, it just doesn't fit this band. So most of the songs are basically about, you know, what was around uh, the man and woman battle. But, you know, there's some other stuff there too, you know, like, for example, a song called Battleground. It's, uh, it's about a guy who gets out of prison, you know, and tries very hard to stay on the narrow line, but, you know, his everything just kind of keeps pulling in back to the old, you know, scene of the crimes and, and just continue on that same, same wrong path. And, uh, 
you got other stuff that it changes. I mean, me and Tom are the, the keyboard player. We write the songs, all the skeletons of the songs. And, uh, you know, it can start with Tom for sending me a chord progression of, or a riff, and then if that sparks something within me, I just uh, try to come up with a with a melody line and lyrics that kind of complement the background. And uh, or in another case, I might might pick up my my guitar and, and write an acoustic piece that would just kind of hammer into uh, for the five five. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's pretty much all over the place when it comes to you know, coming up with something. And that's that's why it was so important when we started talking about making another a new album. Uh, the first thing we all agreed upon was uh, to make to do this one in a different way. And the first step was to to get somebody outside the band to take care of the producer duties and uh, and we fell upon Jimmy Wister, who knows this band inside out and was the kind of music that we do and he's just really gifted songwriter player so it was kind of very easy to yeah. to go that route but you know that that alone makes a twist which we desire for example to have somebody else looking at this band from mm -hmm. outside and, and bringing in all these you know ideas that we've never come up with it's really cool plus you know of course the, the changing of uh, the guitarist makes a huge difference just arranging wise you know starting from uh, uh, in some of the songs he, he came up with uh, great ideas for I mean we had a great chorus but the verses weren't that good he'd say you know hey how about this I mean this fits perfectly with this and blah 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 so it was, uh, and you know, even 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 with the lyrics, I mean, I'd already had a full set of lyrics for a for a particular song, but you know, how about changing this because this sounds cool, but still, you know, maintaining the uh, the idea of the song. And we'd sit there in the studio while I was singing. We'd have something like fucking, you know, 24 hour session, just hammering out new ideas and going as we, you know, recording as we go. Mm -hmm. Which was really cool. And sort of, you know, kept us on our toes. When talking about the video, not really. I mean, um, uh, it was always a small crew, crew of people working at the same time. And, uh, so in a sense, the whole virus situation didn't really affect us that much. But it did in a way that, of course, the release had to be postponed and the, and the, the process of, of finishing the album kind of got delayed because, uh, because of our producer getting sick. And so in that sense, it affected us but in the big picture we just you know we, we were so lucky to have a, to have a focus during that mm -hmm. weird time to put our minds and hearts into making the album you know, it helped us tremendously mentally yeah you know just just the idea of getting the product out and knowing that there are people sort of, you know, there's a demand for, for new stuff and something that takes the focus out of the bad things. I just hope that Build the Burn is, is one of those things. Yeah, we plan to do that because of the situation, what it is. Uh, you can't, I mean, we're putting the album out and it would be great to to get to go out there and play the damn thing with people because that's the best part of the whole thing we do. But you know, that's not possible so so we kind of had the plan of uh, doing a, another live stream but I don't know man, it's just
just uh, <laughs> yeah. it's not fun, you know. And, and I'm not too. It gets old pretty fast, you know? and uh, so right now we're uh, with the mindset of okay, let's do it when it's when it's possible to do it the traditional way of getting as many people as possible in. It's just a good time. With it. Yeah. That's why we do the the album, yeah. you know. It's always the best thing to to uh, you know, once you get it out of your system to a record, that's another thing. Because, you know, you get so fucking bored with yourself. So, uh, yeah. You know, once you're recording, I mean first you write them, then you rehearse them, then you arrange them, then you record them like, over and over again. Because you're, you're so bored with that whole thing when the album is done, you know. I listen to it once, like okay, that's it. <laughs> then I'm just dying to to go out with the guys and get together at the rehearsal and start banging on those songs uh, to live to live versions, you know, and then go out and perform them to people. That's that's the thing. I don't want to get back to that record ever again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you have to. I mean, in some cases. You know, you just try and try, but you, you can't make the song work as a live version. And you, then you just skip it. I mean, then it just continues to live on as a track from an album. But, uh, and then in other cases, you know, you try out a song and, and uh, you have to do some slight changes. You know, changing keys or something like that, just, just to make it sound better. You have to work on it, and that's uh, no, that's probably the only time this band ever rehearses is before <laughs> you know getting on out on tour just to get those new songs. Yeah. Right. Just you know, take it easy. Have have patience, and uh, meanwhile, you know, check out Feel the Burn. I just hope it makes you feel good. <laughs>